The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, folks, this is being recorded. Something I mentioned at the beginning of every single webinar is watch this again. Why? Because it's going to help it sink into your long-term memory. I have some specific guidelines that I have discovered over the course of my trading career that I want to share with you guys. So without further ado, let's get on with it. This is the broken wing call butterfly. Great for a market neutral assumption where we want to eliminate all downside risk. So we think that the underlying is going to trend sideways, but man, we're worried about that downside, not so much about the upside. So this would be a strategy where the broken wing call butterfly would be a perfect uh, option strategy for that type of assumption or, you know, worrying about those nuances there. So without further ado, let's get on with a couple of things. I'll get out of the way real quick. My name is Eric Wilkinson. You guys may very well recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about economic, the geopolitical environments, how that comes in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. And I do the same thing for you folks in my daily market commentaries. In these webinars, what I've done is over the course of my 25 years of trading, streamline the process for you guys to find the optimal strategy for any given assumption. We don't just pick option strategies out of the hat here. It's not a roulette type game. What we do is we're going to be looking at these underlyings and seeing how they are reacting to the environment around them. And then that will lead us to the right option strategy for the assumption we have. And we'll break that all down today in this webinar for the Broken Wing Call Butterfly. Uh, but I started out trading in college with some money I'd earned, moved to Chicago, jumped into the pits and been trading stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies and options on all these products in just about all market conditions. All right. So, like I said, this is on the broken wing called Butterfly. But one thing we got to do right now is put this on the shelf right now because we're doing the roadmap to trading options. So one of the things we've got to do is start planning our trip. And when we plan the trip, we need to understand a couple of things. So what we're gonna learn today is once we've come up with that directional assumption, uh, whether it's bullish, bearish, or market neutral, we are going to follow this same roadmap to follow uh, these guidelines in order to get that right strategy for this assumption. We're gonna talk about the destination. What I wanna talk about there with the destination is that underlying that XYZ stock, is it option tradable? Just because it's in mainstream media doesn't mean there's always options being traded readily around that underlying. Yes, there's some, most often if there's a stock that's trading, you know, quite a bit as a stock, they're going to create options for it. But that doesn't mean there's a lot of eyeballs in there or a lot of market makers really making those tight markets. So uh, we want to make sure we avoid anything with really wide markets. And I'll talk about how we figure that all out. The environment, that's the volatility. What type of volatility is this underlying currently experiencing? Is it low or is it high? And it, we're not just talking about, you know, a 55 implied volatility being high or low. We need to know what that means in relation to what this underlying usually trades in and around. Sometimes that could be high for an underlying, sometimes that could be really low. What we need to know is how it is in relation to this underlying. And finally, or the duration, what's the optimal duration we want to implement this type of strategy around? Those are things that you aren't going to find online. They're not gonna talk about the optimal duration for this type of strategy nor are they gonna go into the details as to the strike location that we really need to have in order to make this strategy a high probability strategy for us, okay? And I have some specifics that we will talk about there. But first, let's talk about the roadmap key or, yeah, the Greeks. Um, you guys aren't leaving real quick. I see there's a lot of returning names. So at this point in time, some of you returning names should probably be able to recite this for me. But for some of those newer faces out there, Let's go over this really quick. The Greeks, and I've got simple ways for you guys to remember these Greeks. So don't run away, don't, don't put your head in the sand. Have a, have a moment here. Delta, on the floor, what we used to say Delta was, is not the option montage, but let me get my pen ready. Uh, Delta is data. So it's gonna tell us a lot of different things about this underlying, but specifically what I wanna talk about right now is its effects on the options premium in relation to the underlying. 
So when we're one thing to know with all of these Greeks is they are assuming a move forward, a move higher, an advancement, however you want to think about it. It's not like negative, like moving downward or back in time. Okay. So always an advancement. So when we're talking about this, we're talking about the first dollar move in that underlying. So if we go over to the option montage, it doesn't matter what underlying we're looking at, XYZ or YYZ, whatever it is. But when we're talking about that first dollar move, so that would be assuming this went to 149.35, okay? So one dollar move higher. Nothing else has changed, okay? We haven't gone a day uh, in time. We're sticking with this specific day. We look at the at the money calls, okay? Um, and that's, I'm gonna be talking about the 150 calls here. If this moved up by $1, our premiums would increase by the corresponding delta, okay? So 45 cents would come into these premiums and we would see them move higher to 405 and 420, okay? So that would be basically 45 cents adds into that specific strike, the 150 strike for a dollar move higher. Now you can see the ones that are further out of the money are a little bit less delta, so you'd only gain a couple of pennies there. Deep in the money, you can see those deltas are much higher, all right, and closer to what that underlying would be dollar for dollar, all right? Puts, notice that on the put side, our deltas are negative because that's the assumption of moving higher and puts make money when they go lower, but on a move higher, dollar move higher, these 145 puts would only decrease by 38 cents. Now, on the flip side of it, let's think about this. If we were to move lower, a negative move plus a negative delta would make that positive to our premium. So they would add in if we started going down, all right? On the flip side, over on the calls, a negative dollar move down or a negative move would make those deltas negative and they would subtract out of the calls. Uh, to their corresponding deltas, all right? And then uh, we've got gamma. Gamma goes with delta. Easiest way to think about it is it goes with delta. And we talked about this was the first dollar move higher when we we're talking about delta. Well, if gamma goes with delta, that's because it's on the second dollar move, okay? So on dollar number two, however you wanna think about it. So on the second dollar move, now we would be at 150.35, right? So that's $2 moves higher. Now we have gamma goes with delta on that second dollar move. So we would be talking about 48 cents going into our premiums on the second dollar move higher. And now we would be at $4.53 uh, and $4.68, all right, right? So that's on the second dollar move. You still get to keep that premium from the first dollar move. The second dollar move, you just think about the gamma goes with delta on that second dollar move. Over here on that second dollar move higher, we would only lose 35 cents over here, right? Because negative 38 plus a positive three makes that only a negative 35 cents to our premiums on that second dollar move high. Now, let's go back to on the negative moves. Obviously, on a second dollar move higher, the premium would add in on that gamma side with the puts, right? Because we have a negative dollar. First dollar, we would have seen those premiums increase by 38 cents. The second dollar move down, then we would see those premiums increase by 41 cents on that second dollar move down. Okay, so makes sense so far? All right, great. All right, theta. Easiest way to remember theta, it's the thief. It's the thief in the night that comes and steals your premium every single night, okay? Now, something special about Theta or the thief is it's not really very aggressive out in time. The further you are to expiration, that thief really isn't doing much damage. The closer to expiration we get, it starts ramping up faster and faster and faster until those last couple of days, it is taking fistfuls of change out of your pocket, all right? So, Further out in time, a little less aggressive, nearer, it's really aggressive, all right? So how do you avoid uh, the thief in the night? Well, you can't really avoid him completely, but you can limit the damage by going further out in time if you're a buyer. Now, if you're a seller, what do you wanna do? You probably lean towards the closer to expiration if you are selling options premium, because then that thief in the night 
is on your side, right? If you sell something high and all of a sudden that premium decreases, well, that is beneficial to all of your strategies. Then if you are collecting a credit, you can sell high and buy low in that case if you just narrow that down to that specific. So we talked about theta is a little bit less aggressive further out in time, closer to expiration right here in the now, it is very aggressive. Now, if we look at it also from a standpoint, the closer to X or the closer to the at the monies, you can see that theta is much more aggressive on these at the monies than the ones that are further out of the money. Okay, so keep that in mind as well, because that will help you with option strategies as well. The thief in the night is more aggressive, closer to expiration and the at the monies. All right, now you can see that theta is negative on both, oops, on both sides here. Neg theta is negative on this column. Why is theta negative? Because we can't go back in time. We don't have a DeLorean that's gonna take us back to 1988. No, every single day it erodes. So you can think, think of theta is the thief in the night that erodes our premiums every single night. You can't stop it. You can't have it add back in, all right? It just constantly is going away or eroding. The other thing that we can look at, so obviously tomorrow we would wake up and these puts would be less uh, by six cents, and these uh, calls would be also less by six cents. If all else remained the same, we opened up tomorrow at the exact same price, just the time component ticked away, we would lose six cents uh, on that strategy tomorrow, all right? Or on those premiums, I should say. All right, Vega. Vega is the last real key, uh, Greek that we're going to talk about, and believe it or not, Vega is not even a Greek, but it is probably the most important quote unquote Greek that we have on the option montage. Why? Because it really determines the pricing of our options, all right? Whether or not they're expensive or they are cheap. It's the only way to tell or to understand whether an underlying has expensive premiums or cheap premiums. And that is what is absolutely imperative to understand in order to know whether you're going to buy or sell, right? You want to buy cheap and sell expensive. Well, you have to know if it is expensive or cheap, all right? So this is the way to really find that out. And Vega is just volatility, all right? So if you ever see me say ball, I'm assuming you understand I'm talking about volatility. I'm never, almost never going to be talking about volume, all right? So Vega is volatility and how it affects our premium is when volatility changes, our premiums will change. And specifically this column over here, which is Vega, all right? We have Vega over here. It's still this same number, okay? And that 26 for XYZ doesn't really, at this point in time, tell us if these options premiums are cheap or expensive. We'll talk about that a little bit further uh, as we dig into this but we need to understand some of these basics around this pricing in order to understand the concepts a little bit later. So volatility is always an advancement. So it's positive on both sides. If volatility goes up, all the premiums go up. And if volatility goes down, all the premiums go down. Simple enough, it affects the at the monies more so than the out of the monies. As you can see here, volatility gets much less out of the money than the ones that are closer to at the money on the puts and on the calls. Further out, obviously, check is a little bit less. So this would be assuming we go up by one percentage point and we go to 27.57, right? So one percentage point increase plus one uh, percent on that. Our premiums would then increase by that 18 cents, all right? So uh, staying with the same puts and on the same calls, we would be talking about increasing by 19 cents. Now, it doesn't seem like a whole lot right now, but what we talk about volatility moving, it isn't, it isn't just moving in one ticks at a time. Usually it has a tendency to move two, three, four, five, sometimes even 10 uh, percentage points in a given day. So we can multiply you know, this times 10 and you would have a dollar 80. So those are the kinds of swings we could see happen to our premiums just on that volatility alone. And that's where a lot of people 
make the mistakes of getting involved in option strategies without clearly understanding volatility. So if there's nothing you walk away from, from this webinar, understanding volatility being paramount is something I would really like you guys to walk away with because volatility is really important in determining the premiums. But we need to know now is 26 high or low for XYZ? And I'll show you an easy way to do that as we go along. But now that we've got the roadmap key out of the way, let's talk about our strategy here. And we're gonna be talking about, again, the broken wing called butterfly. But like I said, I, I want you guys to have that concept in the back of your head so you can kind of follow along. But ultimately on any given day, when we're going in and trading, we don't say, I need to put on a broken wing called butterfly today. Uh, how would I do that? No, we don't do that. We we come up with a directional assumption when we're flipping through the charts. Maybe you have uh, somebody giving you guys support and resistances and things of that nature. Well, you know, those are the things that I do in the daily market commentaries, not so much here in the webinars because I want to try and focus on this strategy. So let's just give an example as to on any given day, we kind of figure out we're looking through the charts, where are we going with this specific underlying? And when we're looking at, say for instance, BABA here on this example, BABA's had some headwinds. Uh, their, um, the, the Chinese government is saying something about them having a monopoly and maybe wanting to break them up, think something along those lines. So, you know, I've come up with a directional assumption. It's come down to the point of control. And if you guys watch my daily market commentaries, I believe that that is like a magnet and it holds the markets right around there because when the, you trade the most around a specific price, uh, that's where value is determined. And that's where people are most comfortable. That's where if you bought and sold at that price, you're not really uh, too concerned about covering that trade. And if it is against you, um, then you're still, again, not too worried about covering that trade, right? So markets pulled back to this point so coming up with my own thesis for this, and I'm not trying to get any of you guys to follow along with this thesis because I'm not even uh, totally sure that I'm going to implement this into my portfolio on, uh, as well. But what we can see right now is we've got volatility is right here at 58. Okay, that's that number I was talking about, Vega. That's that same number that we would find in the option montage. I've got volatility spiking right there. So that's an opportunity to take advantage of what? Selling premium, exactly. So we want to sell premium because it is expensive. Well, if we're selling premium, we probably want who on our side? Vega. So we're probably going to be looking at closer duration. I want you guys to just start piecing this together because I don't want you guys to learn how to trade options. I want you guys to understand the basic levers and pulleys of trading options. And this is it, okay? I'm giving you that. Uh, it's not just about, hey, I've got a directional assumption. I'm looking for, you know, 500% return on my trade. I'm looking for highest probability to make money, okay? And this is how we're gonna do that. Increase those probabilities of success. So I've got this spike in volatility. The market's coming back down. So now I'm coming up. I think that this underlying is going to trade in a relatively tight range now from, you know, let's just say from there to there, just kind of drawing lines. So I think that we're going to kind of trade and bounce back and forth right around that point of control where the time and volume has been spent, at least for the next foreseeable future, right? So that's my thought. But I'm worried about them getting broken up in the underlying tanking to the downside. So I want to eliminate any downside risk. So that is the light bulb that starts going off. All right, that means I need to start thinking somewhere around a uh, a broken wing called butterfly because a broken wing called butterfly, if I nail it right here, I'm gonna make the highest profit. I think it's gonna stay right here, but I also want to eliminate any downside risk to this trade uh, whatsoever. Now, there are some other ones, you know, maybe, a, a, uh, a short call spread or something like that, take advantage of high volatility is something you could do also uh, as well. That might uh, even fit this strategy a little bit better. I'm not gonna dig into that devil of the details. At the end of the day, I, I am, I want, I believe I can nail this, this spot 
for my trade. So that is ultimately what is going to lead us to something like the butterfly because the butterflies, you really think that you've, you've got that, that price or that number nailed and that's what's going to give you the highest profit potential and that's ultimately what leads us to the broken wing butterfly i think it's going to trade in a tight range but i want to eliminate downside risk if i want to eliminate all my downside risk that's when we look to break the wing on the butterfly okay so we've gotten this this we believe we've got a neutral assumption but we want to uh, and we think that this is out of the question, not even going to happen there. But is there going to be a bearish move? That's where we've got a question. So therefore, uh, I want to create a situation where I eliminate any downside risk. Okay. So that's kind of like what the analyze tab will look like. If you had a regular butterfly, it would look more like this. Okay. Where you you could lose in both directions, profit and loss, right? This is zero and zero, all right? So we break the wing on this side and that eliminates our downside risk with this straight. So, you know, ultimately when we're kind of picking our, our direction, we think we're gonna move sideways, but we know we wanna eliminate this side, but we don't necessarily know. Maybe we'll go have a little bit of downside. I, I don't wanna risk that. It could even go further. I ultimately want to make it back here, but maybe there's, you know, different types of scenarios that could send us in different directions and we have to ultimately get back to our spot, right? But we definitely do not want any of this up here, okay? So ultimately, if we're taking like 70 out, we might want to have to dip down to, I think this is 40 and then come back up through 70 or something like that to 90. <laughs> yes, I do know my approach. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, so do we have a good destination? This is where we were talking about. I was just looking at BABA, right? And I have to understand, is BABA, a, everybody, a lot of people have heard of BABA, uh, but are people trading the options around that? So I have a couple of rules for this. If we are looking at an underlying, like specifically BABA, let me get rid of this for you guys so you don't have to stare at that. <clears throat> we're looking at BABA. It's right around $218. So my, my rule for this or the guideline for this is anything that is greater than $200, greater than $100 really, if it's greater than $100 stock, we basically will move this decimal one, two, three ticks to the left. So we do the decimal one, two, three ticks to the left and we have 20, let's call it 22 cents, right? I'm rounding up here, it's 21, eight, 21 cents, right? If I move that one, two, three, 21.8 cents, just rounding it up to 21 cents. Look down here in the option montage and basically all of these options at the money or just slightly in the money, you know, closest to 35 days to expiration. Why that specific location? Because that's where the most time and volume, generally speaking, is for any given uh option contract is the ones that's closest to about 35 days to expiration. We used to call that the spot month on the floor. So that's where we're going to be looking at for the most time of volume being traded. So 22 cents, you can see here, this is 15. We've got 10 cents, we've got 10 cents, we've got 10 cents. So it's fitting that rule quite nicely across the board. So that I would say is when we're talking about uh, our in uh, our analogy for something like this. No, I, I just closed that down and I want it back, right? Um, so what we want to do for our analogy, if it fits my rule, that's a green light, all right? So if it fits the rule of moving the decimal, one, two, three, then that is a green light. If we have two times the rule, then we're looking at a yellow light, okay? And a red light would be three times that rule, right? Because Having an option, having this option trade with 66 cent wide bid offers, that's just astronomical in relation to what this underlying should be trading at. It should be inside of my rule always. Um, well, you know, sometimes right around expiration after the close, it's not going to make that market. Like right now, I took screenshots here. Why? Because 
it's after the close and these markets are going to be really wide and probably not fit this rule. So I, I've learned over the course of my educational career that when we're doing these after the close, I need to make sure I take screenshots. So this fits that rule. And if we are looking at something where we are talking about it is less than a hundred dollar stock, let's say if it's less than a hundred dollar stock, then my rule is for our analogy for the stoplight, right? We can get that. My rule is less than or equal to 10 cents wide in the option montage. That would be a green light fits the rule. Again, two times the rule, same thing. Two times my rule is a yellow light and red light is three times the rule, right? Three times the rule is a red light, okay? So if it's less than $100 stock, we're just going 10 cents wide or less in the option montage post just the expiration here, about 35 days, you know, we're inside of that right now. Um, on a stock over $100, we just move the decimal three ticks to the left. If it's a $1,000 stock, how wide should we less than or equal to? A dollar, okay? So pretty simple. Move the decimal three ticks to the left on anything over $100 is the easiest way to find out how tight those markets should be, all right? If they're that tight, that means there's open interest, okay? That means it is a good destination. Yes, you can flip over here and hit this button up here and drop it down and say, hey, what's the volume and open interest going on? You can kind of look at that as well. But I can assure you that if you go through my process really quick, and, and this seems like it's a lot long and drawn out, right? Could I click on that tab and find the answer the other way with volume and open interest? Well, yes, but this is a pretty simple one. You can look at it, it's less than $100. I can immediately look down here and see they're tighter than 10 cents wide. That's option tradable, all right? Then you can kind of go and start playing around in different uh, durations here, knowing that there is good optionality all right, for, all right? And over $100, just move that decimal. It's pretty simple, all right? So we've got that. That is key for picking the right destination. Now, what's the right environment? Well, this is where we're talking about with that volatility. And what I was saying is it really is the most important um, Greek to determine our option strategy because if volatility is high, we know those premiums are expensive. If volatility is low, we know those premiums are cheap. So what we have to do is kind of think of it with our analogy again, low volatility is sunny. You can stick around at your destination. You can hang out outside. Well, generally speaking, hang out outside at your own accord for as long as you want. Uh, you can take your time getting there. You can go, uh, you know, take your time on your destination, stop at different roadside attractions. But when it's kind of volatile, when, when there's high volatility, think about it as like it's raining. Do you want to stick around here while it's raining or do you want to get to your destination quickly? to uh, enjoy those sites and things of that nature. In this regard, we're thinking we, if you have high volatility, you want shorter duration, okay? Low volatility, it's sunny, you want longer duration, right? All right, it helps limit that theta or exploit it. So when we're looking at this and we can see what is 58, well, in regards to the beauty and implied volatility is every underlying has its own implied volatility, and it also has a tendency to want to stay in a specific range. As you can see with this one, if I could possibly draw a straight line, you can see that it wants to stay within those boundaries relatively tight, right? So we could say that when it gets up around this area, it is starting to be a little frothy on those premiums. Um, and another thing I want to know with this is I want to take out that spike, and I also don't think we're gonna be back to 2019 levels. So I need to kind of isolate what I'm doing here in regards to implied volatility as well. Uh, I'll show you some really easy streamlined ways to figure this out. And for you guys that like to dig into those details, I've got something for you. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we can see here is that implied volatility is relatively high for this underlying. So I would say it is, um, you know, Volatile, all right? All of these things, high volatility, I've got a market neutral assumption, I wanna limit downside risk. Why does this all matter? Because volatility 
is going to determine when it goes higher, volatility premiums are expensive. And when it goes lower, those premiums are becoming cheaper, right? So I want to sell high and buy low. When volatility is high, I want to sell it. When volatility is low, I want to buy it. And so right now we can see that 58 for BABA is really expensive. Now I want to do something really quick. Let's try and compare apples to oranges in a sense and, and make some sense of this. All right, so we can see 58 is high. And when we're looking over at the option montage, let me try and find my option platform. Let's pull this up, go back to BABA. You can see the markets have gotten really wide after the close. So what I wanna talk about here is the premiums. All right, and we can see that that uh, premium over here is around 56, 57. It's really close to what we were seeing over there in the chart, and it's always gonna be really close to that. Um, so let's just take a look at Visa, all right? Because Visa's vo volatility is 27. Now, yes, I just told you guys, does that mean it's high or low for itself? Well, you can see Visa is really low, but what I wanna say is that prices are so close to what we were looking at at BABA, um, but these at the monies, the 47 deltas, these at the monies are $4 and 30 some odd cents, right? Now, let's look at BABA's again, uh, BABA again, and you can see these at the monies at the, about the same strike, the same delta, right? You know, same distance away that we were just talking about, just a couple of dollars. These are worth $10. So what I'm saying here is if BABA was around a 26 volatility, you could expect these premiums to be about $3 less, right? Okay, so that's why we, we need to understand volatility. If BABA had a 25 Vega over here, this number was 25, we could expect these premiums to be around $7. So you can see as volatility increases, those premiums increase, all right? Now, um, and if, volat if BABA had that premium down there at around the 25, you could see that that would be very low for even BABA. Right now, we have it up at around 55. So we have to determine if volatility for BABA is high or low. Now, a lot of you can look at this chart and just based on those lines that I drew, you can tell that it is relatively high. But for some of you guys that really wanna dig into these details here, we can break this down a little bit further and you can, uh, here is for you guys that like the math, you take the current implied volatility, IV, right, minus the low IV, you take that sum and divide it by the high IV minus the low IV. All right. And ultimately what we're trying to do is figure out where the current implied volatility is in relation to the high and the low. All right. So it's not a perfect mathematical equation because obviously based on what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm discounting all of this, right? If it goes higher like this, it would still be 100%, all right? Because if I take the current right now and say it's 58 minus the low, which uh, let's just say it's 30 for math, and then I take the high, which really is right there at 58 minus the low, which is going to be 30 again, you can see that basically we have 100%. Right or one, which would be 100%. So it's at the highest level we've seen basically all year. Doesn't necessarily mean it can't creep a little bit higher, but at least we know we're getting ourselves involved in a situation where we are selling high premium. I'm not buying premium way up here because we can see when volatility has a tendency to get up this high, it goes down. And when it gets down this low, it wants to go higher. So we try to play the game against those premiums, all right? Yes, we can have our directional assumption, but that's only part of the game. Part of the game is getting that directional assumption right, but the way to increase your probabilities of success is using options and implementing those options at the right time and place. Like you would not want to be buying calls up here or on a bullish direction or buying puts on a bearish direction. Why? Because you could have the market go the correct direction that you wanted, 
But if that volatility really sucked out, we could see, you know, if it came back down to 40 or whatever, that's almost 18 percentage points, right? Well, 18 percentage points or down to 40, actually it came down to 40, you know, and we were talking about 20 cents. That's over $3 losing out of our premium. All right. So you could lose, you know, on a $6 move in your directional being directionally right. You got a $6 move in your direction, but that volatility coming out could completely offset it. All right. So that's how we turn the tables into our favor is setting these strategies up. If we get the market direction right and uh, all of those other levels and pulleys are in place, then we will be much more uh, successful than otherwise would. All right. So make sure you take advantage of that. Nothing else. Know you're selling premium when the volatility is high and buying it when it's really low. All right. And really, you can do it several ways. You can kind of figure out drawing it there. OK, I know it's high. I got to sell premium. I know it's low. I got to buy premium. Um, you can do it that way as well. Figuring out this is, you know, digging into the minutia. All right. But ultimately, what we want to say is if volatility is greater than 50 percent, being this number comes out greater than 50 percent, then we're selling premium. All right. And if it's uh, less than 50 percent. That's a 50. 50 percent, we're buying premium. All right. Now, if you are brand new to options trading, lower risk tolerance people, I have no problem with you saying, you know, let's go greater than 70 and less than 30. All right. You can do that to start out until you start getting really comfortable increasing your trying to increase your risk tolerance a little bit. All right. So for right now, what we can say it's at 100 percent. We know that we have high volatility. So that means we're leaning towards selling premium. And if we're leaning towards selling premium, what do we say? We want to sell premium. We want to sell high, buy low. Well, what duration do we want to think we want to use, right? What else can help us with this strategy to sell high and buy low if we don't see that volatility coming up? Theta, exactly. We want theta. We want to streamline and get there quickly. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time in this. Because when we're selling options, we want to exploit that theta decay, all right? And here we go. When we're breaking it down, remember I kept talking about the spot month being that 35 days to expiration. We can see that the at the monies, we're going to be talking about the at the money calls and puts with this strategy. But we want to get involved in a situation where that theta decay is really affecting us because we are leaning towards high volatility strategy. It means we're collecting a credit, all right? at the monies are affected the most by this theta decay and the volatility, right? So volatility comes out, we get that theta decay. All of those things will work in our favor with this um, broken wing called butterfly. Why? Because we're selling two at the monies, all right? And when we're selling those two at the monies, those are the ones we're collecting the most premium for. And if those start going down in value quickly, then we will be able to cover this trade, uh, you know, in a much shorter duration. And why be in a trade as long, uh, longer than you really need to, all right? So we want to exploit that theta decay going on. All right, so what vehicle do we do use? Let's go over this again. We have a market neutral assumption. I think I'm going to be able to nail this number right here at around 220. I don't think it's going to go much further than that, maybe by 50 cents or a dollar at expiration in the next 20 some odd days. We might get a couple little breaks or, or rallies, but ultimately I think it's going to pull back to that number. Um, but I, you know, this whole overarching thing with the, them getting broken up, that could really create some downside volatility or downside movement. And I want to eliminate that risk. I'm not worried about the upside. All right. Um, and, and that's just in my mind here, right? That's why I would come up with this strategy. Not worried about the upside. I am a little worried about downside, but I think we're going to nail this right here. Uh, so we're going to be using the broken wing call butterfly. Why are we using the call butterfly? Broken wing call butterfly. Call butterfly eliminates the downside risk. How does it eliminate that downside risk? It is by putting an embedded short call spread in there. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. 
Broken Wing uh, online, you'll find this. You got the long call, you got the short, two short calls. These are the same strikes they might even give you, and then you skip a strike. Well, what does that mean? That doesn't really tell us anything. Um, well, for me, you know, you might say, I'm going to be doing the at the monies, an in the money call and a short out of the money call, but they're still telling you to skip the strikes. I'm going to go a little bit further and tell, and this is ish. You know, somebody was saying, you know, it's not a 70 delta last time. Well, this is an ish. And when I'm talking about the ish, that means it's like a 70 handle, all right? So it could be 76, 78, all right? But that's where we're going to be looking at is somewhere in that 70-ish handle here on the deltas, all right? So when we're building this strategy out, we're going to be going as close to the 50-ish deltas. These are going to be the same strike, all right? They're the same strike, all right? But this one is going, if this was, you know, $5 wide, if we're skipping a strike to this one, this would be $10 wide in that regard, all right? So we skip a strike, and ultimately what it's doing is, is because there's a short call spread in there that I'll explain here a little bit further in a second. Now, the difference between the traditional butterfly and the broken wing butterfly, traditional butterfly, you have to nail the number, uh, but you do have lower margin requirements. Remember. When uh, you have a little bit less risk, you know, you're going to have to put up a little bit less margin. When you have more risk, you have to put up a little bit more margin, but usually higher risk comes with higher reward as well. And that's the same with this one. This one protects, uh, has higher profit potential, but higher max loss. Remember, because we're adding risk to one side to eliminate risk to the downside. And I'm going to explain that a little bit for, more, but that broken wing is the where we are adding more risk. And that transfers to the other side of the strategy where we've eliminated that risk. All right. And um, like I said, we eliminate any downside move. Now, let's break this down again a little bit further, going from the traditional butterfly. If I was going to look at a Baba butterfly, right? I would sell the at the monies, following those same rules we would normally use. Sell two at the monies. So I'm selling two of those, and then I'm going to the 205s right here and buying this one. And then, so what is that difference here between these two? It's 15. So a normal butterfly, I would go up and I would be buying these, all right? And it creates that butterfly for a debit. If we're looking at our risk profile, then we would see it as there's risk to the upside. If the market rallies, there's risk to the upside and risk to the downside, ultimately nailing the number right in the middle. Now, we're going to break that wing. So we break that wing by getting out of this, selling. Remember, we had bought these. So we're going to sell those. We're flattening out of those. So this is a sell, and then we go out 15 ticks to buy those. So in a sense, this is where you break the wing, or break the wing, not buy two, break the wing on that, right? So I've sold the 35s to get out of that 35 and bought the 50s to break that wing. So ultimately selling this call spread, right? I'm selling a 3550 call spread, that's where the wing gets broken and that collection of credit pays off any downside risk. So ultimately, and I'll show you on a, a, on the platform here in a minute, but I want like I said, I wanted to make sure that I got these screenshots during the day so you guys wouldn't be lost. So you can see that when I sold that 35, bought the uh, 50s, I transferred that from a debit to a credit. Now, if you ever build this strategy out, you break the wing, you increase risk to one side, which is what we're doing, increasing risk to the one side, you need to eliminate risk to the downside, okay? All right, we're, it, we increase risk to this side, we need to eliminate risk to the downside. There's no sense in taking more risk on one side and still having risk to the downside with the strategy. Don't do it. If that if it doesn't work out uh, properly, because sometimes you'll have to do it for a debit, build it out, and it'll say it's a debit. Don't do it. There's better strategies out there, like maybe go to the short call spread or something like that to 
you're not worried about upside. You just want to eliminate any downside, take advantage of that. That would be where we would step to a different strategy. Okay. But, you know, yes, I am kind of cherry picking this one because it works out. Uh, ultimately, that's why, because we've come up with our directional assumption. I want to find something that fits that for the webinar. But in real life, we might still have that come to this point and can't get it to build out for a credit. Well, then there's better strategies out there. Uh, like the short call spread or a short call or something like that for a downside move, a neutral to downside move. Generally speaking, I would say the short call spread, I have more of a bearish move uh, assumption imminent. All right, so let's pull up this platform real quick and I'll show you how we build that out so that we are selling this as a, let me get, blow this up. So we can see that uh, like a regular butterfly, I want to just show you on the regular butterfly for Visa. Look at that. Those are only $5 wide. But if we're looking at BABA on a regular butterfly on these at the monies, um, I would sell two of those by the, now I can go all the way out to the 205s and basically go all the way out to the uh, 35s. All right. So you can see that much wider uh strategy than what we were able to do. And why? Because the volatility is pumped up so much and it affects these at the monies. These at the monies, the ones I'm selling are going to allow me to get those wings further away. All right. So that's why it's imperative when we're doing like selling these at the monies in this strategy that we get it when the premiums are really expensive. You can imagine what would happen is if the, the money I was able to collect by these at the monies was $7. Well, that brings in those wings. So my strategy is going to look more vertical in the analyze tab than splattened out a little bit for this strategy. So let's just go through this real quick, selling those and then buying the regular butterfly. And then I said, I'd buy the 35s right there. So I've got this built out like a regular butterfly. Okay. Two at the monies, $15. That's all right. Uh, is that right? 10. I want the tens. Sorry. Did I do this all wrong? Uh, 1035. So sell two of those, buy the 205s. So I went $15 lower um, and go $15 higher, which is 25. I think I was doing the 25s earlier. 25 and then go uh, 205s. So 15 higher on the 35s <laughs> why am i doing the math wrong i want to do the 20s sorry sell two of the 20s 15 dollars lower sorry let's do this again 20s i do the 20s so 35s there we go there we go sorry sorry folks uh, all right so that's a regular butterfly right now here's where i was saying you would sell that embedded short call spread in a sense uh, if, if it helps you think about this um, that way. So ultimately I'm holding down the control button. I sell, if I sell those ones I had originally in the bot, it gets rid of them. And then I go out 15 ticks further and I buy those. That's where the broken wing comes in. So that creates this credit. I This short 35, 50 call spread increases my risk to the upside, just like a short call spread, right? A short call spread has risk to the upside. But that collection of credit transfers that credit to the downside. I have no risk to the downside. It's a total credit, all right? So we can go over to the Analyze tab. I mean, uh, might even still have that old one over there. So let's just uh, analyze this all right um 25 35 let's get rid of this one so this is the regular butterfly again right now i get rid of the 35s you know however you want to think about it i get rid of them or i sell a 15 dollar call spread right and transfer that to the 150s now you can see ultimately it just shifted more risk to the upside eliminated any risk to the downside, right? Because if it goes down, I get to keep that credit. If it goes up, I've got risk to the upside, but I've also got a higher uh, 
max profit, right? My max profit increased quite a bit. Watch when we switch it back to the 35s, all right? So increased quite a bit by several hundred dollars, all right? $200 on the upside, all right? So I've increased my risk to the upside, decreased my risk to the downside all completely. Any questions so far? So make sure you at least get a credit or zero, you know, credit or zero outlay of money. You have to eliminate your risk to the downside, all right? If you're increasing your risk to the upside, eliminate with this strategy any risk to the downside. And I can tell you, I've seen people build this strategy out where they still have a debit to the downside. They still have risk. That does not make sense. If you're increasing your risk to one side, you need to be eliminating risk to the downside. So, um, you know, some people will do this for a dollar debit and, you know, that's basically a hundred dollar loss in my eyes, right? Um, all right, so we talked about this. Once you've come up with your directional assumption, you guys have got this, it's pretty simple. You come up with a directional assumption, look at that underline, make sure it fits my rule, right? Over a hundred dollar stock, three ticks to the left, that is what we are looking for for our option montage on 35 days to expiration. Those ones that are the spot month, the ones that are uh, really being used most. If it's less than $100 stock, it's got to be 10 cents or less, right? Over $100 stock, move the decimal three ticks to left. Our environment, every underlying has its own implied volatility coefficient, right? 55 for BABA might be expensive or cheap, we don't really know. We have to look and see what BABA has been doing over the last 52 weeks on this implied volatility in order to determine whether those are expensive or cheap premiums. That's how you tell. That's the fastest way to do it. Um, all right, yeah, you can probably look at Black Shoals and go through all that math, but I, I, I get chiggers when I think about Black Shoals. <laughs> all right, um, environment. The environment is that volatility coefficient, like I talked about, days to expiration. If we have high volatility, we need to know, we want to take advantage of theta. High volatility, usually shorter duration, low volatility, we use higher duration, right? And our strike locations, we've got those issues, right? The uh, 55 at the monies, all right, are what we're gonna be selling. And then we're gonna basically go out to the 70-ish delta, buy that, and, skip the strike to uh, finance all of our downside risk, all right? So max profit on this, is that middle strike, it's our at the monies minus the lower strike plus the credit. It's plus a credit because that credit we got to keep. So that helps increase our, our success here. So basically the width of that lower strike or that lower spread plus the net credit, remember, when you're doing your max profit on this, we are trying to figure out what this number is. So when we take the lower strike or the middle strike, right? Minus the lower strike, all right? Plus the credit, we got a one cent credit. So our max profit is basically the difference between these two strikes, all right? Our max loss, is the higher strike minus the skip strike minus the credit. The credit we got to keep, all right? So we need to look at basically our skip strike, which is the skip strike right here, minus the lower strike. So this is what we could possibly lose, right? The width of this spread, that's that short call spread that I talked about, the width of that spread minus the credit which is a one sick credit on, in this case. So basically for the most part, it's the whole width there, right? So it's that short call, short call spread. And because we are doing this for a credit, if you do this for a debit, you're gonna have to have two break evens. Don't ever do this. I'm assuming you guys have learned at this point in time, I've beaten it into your heads that we are not doing this for a debit, we're doing this for a credit, but it's the skip strike plus the credit plus the width of the long spread, all right? So ultimately, what we're looking at is the uh, skip strike minus the net, uh, it's a little confusing, but <laughs> I get it. 
basically it is our break even is the difference between the skip strike, which is we're skipping, or uh, that short strike. So basically it's the skip strike minus the spread plus that, or, uh, and that break even has to be accounted for plus the break even, all right? Now for me, I am going to be looking at getting out at, so we're taking the broken wing call fly, right? We're taking the broken wing call fly and we are using the strikes of 205, 220. Maybe you're looking at these are the roads in the 250s, all right? The 250 calls, all of these are calls. We're selling two of those. We're buying one of these and we're buying one of these, right? And we're doing this for a one cent credit, all right? Now, my max profit on this is that, remember, $15. It's the width of this plus that credit. I'm just going with the $15. That's my max profit or times 100 because every one lot in options, you guys, there's an option contract multiplier of 100. Every one option is equivalent to 100 of the underlying, okay? So that's why we multiply it by 100. If you were to convert it to stock, it would be, you would get 100 for every one lot option, all right? Um, so uh, $15, I'm looking at getting out of 50% of max profit, all right? So in this case, $7 is where I'm looking at, or $700 winner on every for every one lot, $750. Max profit on that is what I'm going to be looking at. On the loss, I'm probably going to ride this out, you guys. Um, unless you do this on a chart setup, it breaks above a Fibonacci or something like that, then write that, you know, it breaks the Fibonacci, the Fib, uh, let's just say the 78 Fib, I don't know. Uh, that looks like a 28 Fib, 78 Fib. That's why I always draw my, all right. You know, you can do that uh, on a loss. Anytime it breaks above that, or, um, you know, you can do a time stop on it or something like that. With this one, you probably don't want to do time stop because it's if you want it to stay right there. But basically 50% of my max profit, I get that volatility coming out quickly, you guys. I'm gonna be able to see this underlying uh, achieve a 50% max profit real quick uh, with this strategy because I'm selling those two at the monies and that's where volatility is going to suck out really quickly on this strategy. So I look at 50% of max profit on it. On a loss, I have a higher risk tolerance, but for you guys, like when you're doing your chart setup, if it breaks that pattern or something like that and say, I'm out, that's where I would write it all down why? Because it'll help you stay mechanical, folks. If you have it in your brain, that you're going to have a tendency to look at that and go, you know what, I think I'm going to do, and you're going to start breaking down your mechanics, okay? In the very beginning of options trading, especially stay mechanical, stay to the rules. It takes the guesswork out of it. You will not be as emotionally attached to uh, what's going on, all right? And money is an emotional attachment, and you've got to you got to let that uh, be out of your head when you're trading options. You have to be thinking about probabilities, okay? And we've eliminated all upside for this strategy, so all of the downside, I I have no risk. If it stays right here where I'm expecting it to, I get to nail the number, and I've got my highest profit potential. So ultimately, if I write it down, I put all this stuff down somewhere. Uh, then you, you can constantly go back and say, this is where I said I was going to get out and you will stick to your guns, all right? You will be much more successful if you do that rather than second guessing yourself uh, and changing you know, midstream and saying, you know what, I'm going to squeeze this out for just a little bit longer. That's usually where things start going bad, <laughs> all right? All right, so if this may have been a little bit above your head, especially if some of you new faces out there, we have a trading bundle for you guys that you can take advantage of. This is our most popular uh, option courses that we've thrown all into one. You can basically watch it from beginning to end, start out as the basic option strategies, building out to more complex ones. And we go in a, a, a real strategic way to learn as we go along, uh, especially if you're jumping in right now. So you get four of my best courses here. Now we're going to Give you a Christmas gift here for $4.97. You're going to get four of my most popular options courses. Like I said, you're going to learn from beginning to end 
you'll be able to go from a noob to a guru uh, where professional traders, even the most savviest of professional traders will learn something and be able to take away $495 worth of information from this. You guys, making the mistake on a broken wing butterfly one time could pay for this entire bundle and it will absolutely save you that money on education uh, by learning through the <laughs> hard knocks, okay? So understand volatility, how it work, really works, how to take advantage of it. Again, here is the link up here. I put it over there in the chat window for you folks to uh, click on. Uh, you can check on that just to make sure it pulls up the right cart here. But again, for 497 is what we have. I would suggest starting out with options basics if you're more newer to trader, go options basics, floor trader hacks, um, and then maybe floor trader hacks to learning and then volatility, kind of in that order, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, you will get a great education however you go through this. Um, but for 497, like I said, without the option contract multiplier, that's only a, a premium $4.95. <laughs> so you mess up on a $4.97 premium, that pays for your entire course. All right, which would is probably well over 50, 60 hours of content here, you guys. So make sure uh, you take advantage of that. And finally, um, yes, it's over there in the chat window. Um, finally, make sure you guys know your risk parameters, know your risk tolerance, uh, and know what you're getting yourselves into by reading this disclaimer. Take a moment to go over that, please. I uh, appreciate it. I hope everybody has either had their happy holiday through Hanukkah or whatever you are celebrating this time of year or a Merry Christmas coming up. Uh, thank you guys all for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys all. There you go. Again, the link You can also punch that into your URL, but ultimately you get the best of the most popular courses for 497. All right. Um, I want 100% option profit. Turn those machines back on. I do too, Rick. I do too. <laughs> Always wearing the trading jacket, a quote unquote jacket. Be safe. That's right. Got the memories. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Rick, for adding some spice to my life today. You guys all, bye for now.